Just before we continue this forum with a very exciting panel about the French ecosystem, I'm sure you want to be here to discuss what's happening in France since we're in Paris. I just want to have two minutes from you to announce uh, special awards through our partner, uh, the Journal du Net. So please welcome on stage Aude Fredouel du Journal du Net. Uh, so I'm working for Le Journal du Net, and we've been partners uh, with Le Web uh, for a while now. So this year, we actually decided to ask our readers to vote for their favorite startups among the startups chosen by Le Web uh, for the startup competition. Uh, so we are really glad because we had uh, almost uh, 1,400 votes on our website. Uh, all the CEOs pitched uh, in videos, and we published everything. Um, so I'm going to announce now the three startups that got the most votes. Uh, the third one uh, was a French one, uh, Pilo, if you can come up on stage. So Pilo is a, a battery you can charge by just shaking it. Thank you. Congrats. So the second startup uh, was Odell, if you can also come up on stage. Congrats. So that is a, an app that lets uh, local businesses create a relationship uh, with their customers. And the uh, first one, the one that got the most votes, is Capo. Uh, it's uh, an app, a uh, social game for cyclists. Congratulations. And maybe we can ask Joanna to come up on stage also. She organized uh, everything with us, Le Web and Journal du Net. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Merci. 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 Okay, so now we are finally with our last panel of the morning. It's a great session for all of you. I'm sure you learn things. Ask all your questions through our mobile app, you know, the interact section. And if you are tweeting about this, it's a double hashtag, le web, hashtag EUF for European Forum. I'm really pleased to welcome our moderators. We've been preparing this session together. It's really great because, you know, last year we learned that French France could be the new startup nation. And uh, recently in the press, I'm sure they've seen there's a lot of debates about what is the position that France can have in the international ecosystem. So I'm sure it would be great to have all our speakers to discuss this. And please welcome on stage our moderator, the European tech correspondent for the Wall Street Journal, Sam Schachner. Hello, welcome. Uh, we've got a great panel here today. Uh, the title of this panel is uh, La French Tech, a startup nation on the rise, but there's a question mark. So uh, we're here to discuss both that statement and why there is that, that question mark there. And uh, I'm going to keep the conversation moving. We've got a great panel. Uh, so I'm going to ask each of you guys to introduce yourself uh, briefly. Why don't we start with uh, Nicolas? So, Nicolas Dufourc, I'm the CEO of BPI France, the public bank for investment. Hello, everybody. I'm Clara Deletraz. I'm the deputy director of the French Tech Mission. Uh, it's a government initiative to, very briefly, to make the revolution of startups in France. Hello, I'm Pierre Kosciusko Morizet. I'm the founder and ex CEO of Price Minister. And I'm the uh, co founder of ISAI, uh, the Internet Entrepreneurs Fund, um, and head of the strategic committee. And I'm also the um, partner of Kernel, which is my holding. And I'm soon to be a new entrepreneur because I'm launching a new uh, company uh, next year. Um, but I don't have the idea yet, so if you have any idea, <laughs> please let me know. And I would okay. like to thank you a lot for uh, not listening to Macron. So, for those who know, Macron is speaking there. Uh, for those um, who don't know, I mean, for those who know and who are here, thank you very much. We'll try to be uh, very inter as interesting as possible. 
Hi, so my name is Miracland. Uh, can we suggest new ideas for your company? Or is go ahead, open? go ahead. <laughs> Later on. So I'm a venture capitalist, um, and I'm also co-president co of France Digital, which is a French association joining forces between entrepreneurs and venture capital to develop the ecosystem. I'm supposed to say also that I'm a member of the uh, National Digital Council because Benoit is not here, so if there's any question around that, I can maybe answer. And yes, in, in terms of questions, you guys all have, uh, I, I assume, the Luweb mobile app. Uh, we don't have microphones in the audience, but I'm going to kick it off with some questions. You can ask questions through the app, and uh, later on in the panel, uh, we'll, we'll turn to you. Um, so just to kick it off, I mean, clearly uh, France, the French tech ecosystem, has a lot of momentum. Uh, the government's made a real priority of promoting startups. Um, some of you might have just run in from the other room where uh, Emmanuel Macron was making the case. Uh, and you know, we have a lot of well-regarded startups that were born here that are raising a lot of money. Um, Blablacar, Sigfox, which is uh, we hear in Le Figaro is going to you know, have a big amount of money raised. Venture funding, according to Dow Jones Venture Source in France, is the highest uh, that it's been. And this year, it's on track to be the highest that it's been since before the Euro crisis in 2012. So, you know, there's definitely momentum. Uh, and so I guess, you know, I, I wonder just if we could start by talking a little bit about what's working and then we can talk about maybe what's not. So, Nicola, do, do you want to, or I mean, anyone? Okay, can? okay. So, uh, actually, I think a lot is working now. A lot is working. Uh, it, it's perfectible, of course, but if you're a young entrepreneur in, in biotechs or in, in, in tech, in internet and so forth, wherever you are in France, you will find seed funds. You start to find angels which are uh, sort of educated tech angels. Not enough. So this we can develop. And then you have a scene of venture funds which is extremely deep. Actually, we, BPI France, we are financing 90 venture capital funds in France. So who knows that France has a wealth of 90, 90 venture funds? Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, there is something that didn't exist uh, three years ago, which is a, a big growth fund, which is able to invest 10 to 50, 50 million euros in, in tech companies, um, which is the fund that we created at BPI France, 600 million euros, it's called Large Venture. So all those tools now are on, uh, on the table. Huh? The atmosphere is extremely pro-entrepreneur, honestly. You have in all the French cities, thanks to the efforts of, of many, many people, incubators and accelerators, and we are financing them, and we are injecting now equity in those structures because they need money. Huh? We have one million engineers in France, the same number as in Germany. Mathematics and algorithmics uh, savvy, very well recognized. So, I mean, the ground is fertile, extremely fertile. Uh, so we only have now, I would say, problems of rich, which is there are so many files of entrepreneurs who want you know, uh, their, their, their uh, projects to be documented by us that we are a bit drowned, to be honest. So we select one out of 100 and we would prefer to select two out of 100. And this needs, uh, you know, bandwidth. So we are ramping up, ramping up the bandwidth. Uh, and, and Clara, what, what, I mean, can you tell us a little bit about what you think, you know, is being done now, how the, how the, the government, I mean, you, you can talk a little bit about what La French Tech is, but how, how the government has addressed some of the concerns that people have raised in the past, or what, what progress mm -hmm. has been made? Um, I think that um, the key point is that uh, we now have a, a new generation of uh, politicians uh, in, uh, in France and that uh, for some years now uh, there has been a very strong political commitment to boost innovation and, uh, and uh, entrepreneurship. So now politicians uh, have uh, understand that uh, innovation and innovation is not uh, um, uh, on uh, R&D matter, but uh, that it is uh, an entrepreneurial and startup matter. And that's a big, big uh, cultural shift. And I, I think it was the, the main problem in France, like culture. And you know, with this new 
uh, generation of, of politics, politicians, but also, of course, uh, of uh, entrepreneurs who now think really big, uh, that think, uh, who think globally, um, with the new role models like uh, Pierre, like uh, Louis Clemer, like, uh, um, like uh, Xavier Niel, etc. All those entrepreneurs, that successful entrepreneurs who now um, are eager to reinvest in the French tech ecosystem, I think that with, with all those uh, ingredients, uh, we are now at uh, a tipping point uh, for, for the French tech ecosystem. Hmm. Uh, and yet, still, when you talk to people in the ecosystem, uh, and also people outside the ecosystem. There's a lot of people at Le Web uh, who've come here from Silicon Valley, uh, and you hear, you know, complaints about the ecosystem. Uh, some people say it's French bashing uh, and that it's just a perception problem. You know, I, I wonder, what do you guys think? Why is there still a, a question mark? And, and how has the, you know, the past couple of years, under Hollande, for instance, how has the French tech policy been? Pierre? Yeah, I, I think French people uh, like to, uh, you know, uh, complain. So, so um, <laughs> I think that uh, that's just a fact. Um, you know, if you go to a, to a coffee in Paris, the, the waiter will complain, right? But he's still serving you the coffee and, and probably a much better coffee than in Starbucks, at least I feel. Um, so, so I think it's the same uh, with, the, with the French tech. I think there is a lot of happening here. Um, obviously, we're not bigger than Silicon Valley. We're much, much, much smaller, but we're growing very fast. Um, and I think the uh, atmosphere is very positive. At ISA, we get uh, five startups a day that apply to, uh, you know, to get funding. Um, so that's uh, almost 2,000 a year. We fund only four of them. So that's the uh, um, same as Nicolas said. We're also too, maybe too selective. Uh, also, uh, for, the fund, for a fund, it's good to be selective. But I think that's um, going in the right direction. And the complaints. Um, some complaints make sense because I think the government has sent very bad signals um, two years ago. But there were basically they, they sent very bad messages. Um, but actually, the reality they've stepped back. Uh, and, and, and in the end, um, the reality is very good. Only we have left this kind of bad image. So um, you know, it's bad. We you know, we but we we, we shouldn't uh, spank us uh, you know all the time. And then we should you know turn the page and think that. The reality is good. Um, look at very good successes we have in France. Um, we talk about BlaBlaCar, Sigfox, uh, uh, PeopleDoc, I invested in, they just raised $20 million and, and, and launching the US. I mean, many companies are doing, are doing very well. Um, so I, I think the, the, what we have to change now is the image we have, and progressively we will change this image through these wonderful startups um, you know, that show that we can do great things here. So, I mean, speaking of the image, uh Problem. I mean, something that has been a, a subject of conversation at Le Web, uh, you know, in, in the past few days, actually was a comment made by the the deputy uh, minister uh, for digital affairs in France, Axel Le Maire, who said to a group of investors, and then later in La Tribune, that she thinks that that France has no uh, no lessons to be uh, made from pulled from Silicon Valley, yeah. and and I, at the very least, regardless of what she meant and what good points she might have had that was received pretty poorly by the, the, the people from Silicon Valley who were here. OK, that, that's, yeah, two sides of the coin. I mean, so when I read that, I thought that, you know, she said something really stupid. Um, and I think, I mean, I still think it's quite stupid to say that. But if you, if you read the whole interview, actually, it doesn't sound stupid. Basically, what she wanted to say is, we, we're not here to just say, you know, Silicon Valley is so great and we're nothing. We're here to say, OK, you're bigger, we're small, but we want to get better. And, that, you know, that, that's good. Uh, I think. You, never, you should never say, we don't have lessons to get from you, because you should you know, always get lessons from everyone. Obviously, that, that's not the right thing to say. Also, I guess the idea is to say that the Silicon Valley ecosystem is not perfect. Um, it's working very well, but, but there, are, that, you know, there can be other, other things. And actually, I, I was in the Valley two weeks ago, and I was a bit shocked to see that um, you know, many, I met many people here who think that the center of the world is Silicon Valley. I think once you start to think you're, in, you're at the center of something, you're just wrong. So, so it's obviously you know, the biggest place in the world for, for tech, but it's not the center of the world. And I think that's, um, that's an issue. I also think that the ecosystem is very, having a strong ecosystem is very important, very rich. You can exchange many ideas. 
but it sometimes can be a bit go against, against uh, creativity. Silicon Valley is now full of, you know, uh, first-in-class students, best-in-class, and they tend to think kind of the same. So, good point for them is that they have a lot of immigrations from outside from the whole world, and I think that's making the ecosystem quite rich. But I think they should, you know, be, be careful of, you know, not becoming too much local and, you know, get, getting more global. In France, it's a bit different. I think we just lack scale. Um, so, so, so that's really what we, uh, what we need to have. But a good thing that we have is I think we are, uh, you know, um, quite uh, heterono heterogeneous, heterogeneous, anyway. Um, so I think that fosters creativity. And, and to start big companies, you need to be very creative. That's, that's very important. Mm. So, okay. So you, you mentioned scale, which is more than just an image question. I, I mean, I wonder what you guys think. Is it really just a perception question or is there, you know, what are the actual things that the French tech ecosystem needs to address in part to help fix the image problem? Sure, so we have still some structural things that need to uh, improve. First one will be, and it's, it's not a French issue, it's actually a European issue, so you'll find the same uh, thing in UK, in Germany, etc. is that, for example, it's an exit issue. So we mm. lack strategic buyers in Europe. This is one of the reasons why all French companies are so turned towards the U.S. It's because it's a bigger market, for sure, but you could just go to you know, the European country, it's mm. closer. But your exit is in the U.S. And so because strategic buyers are there, the stock exchange is a lot more liquid, so there's a certain number of things that make that at some point when you need to scale, and uh, Nicolas said that we started to have late stage fund in France, but it's still not where it should be. So in, for scaling, you need to have capital at scale as well, and mm. growth equity funds are not where they should be in Europe, and that, that also is a European um, uh, thing, it's not a French thing. Um, so I think we, if we need to address that, getting more growth equity in France and Europe in general, and having the whole um, old... One of the reasons we don't have any strategic buyers is that our economical giants are very old. So they're not, they don't have that very innovative spirit of when they uh, look at a startup or look at, at, at their own business, uh, trying to think of the next step and making a lot of bets on a new product, on a new market or something else. So mm -hmm. whenever they think of merger and acquisition, usually the classic state of mind is to say, I'm gonna buy my competitor, so I'm gonna g gain market shares and I'm gonna value him on the same St um, stock multiples, comps that I have on my own exchange. So you're not valuing growth, you're based on profitability, all the things that a startup is not good at. Mm. So basically this is really something that we need to address as a whole ecosystem is not only to have the startup growing, but also to have uh, big players starting to become strategic buyers. One of the good thing about having companies like Crito building up to that level of scale is that they're starting to buy startups in France and Europe in general. Right. So another way of doing things is not changing the old guys, but also of getting new guys coming at scale and, and doing that virtual silk circle of, of exiting you, the company. You've, you've looked into, I mean, you're, you, uh, through one of your many hats, <laughs> uh, have, uh, have done some looking at late stage funding versus early stage funding in, in France, right? Right, in Europe in general. So right. if you look at the... Um, Not just France, it's a problem. I mean, we were talking about it in the other Absolutely. panels earlier today. And if you look at the financing of digital economy in Europe, so there's macro things that I just said, knowing that we were lacking growth equity, etc. But if you look at the difference between the country, the one place where France is really strong is on early stage financing and a number of companies that are financed every year uh, at the early stage level mm. and that we're doing a lot uh, we're, we're more poor on the late stage financing, so it's, there's an unbalanced um, chain of financing in France. It's mostly driven by early stage, and we need to, uh, uh, we're lacking capital to, to scale. If you look at the UK, it's a lot more balanced, and it's bigger still than France. Uh, but if you look at Germany, what's interesting is that it's a lot more mature on late stage, but they're nowhere on early stage. Mm. So the early stage company, uh, financing of the company are mostly done by business angels, very strong business angel, but they're really not where France is. Mm. Uh, so it's pretty interesting to see the difference between the countries so you can see the uh, opportunity also as a venture capitalist. 
Nicola, what, what, I mean, you I, said I, the I word. Think one of the main differences between the French uh, ecosystem and, and uh, Silicon Valley is the nature of the ambition, of what, what you would call the legitimate ambition. In France, it is quite still difficult for a young entrepreneur to voice the fact that he wants to make a unicorn. He wants to build a 1 billion euro company. I will do it. I will attack the giants. There's still a little bit of sarcasm against that, to the point that when he w wants to sell his uh, company to, to a CAC 40 company, the CAC 40 will never pay the multiples of California. Hmm. Because CAC the CAC 40 company is not, is not uh, living through that kind of ambition either. So what we try to do at BPI France is to sort of door to door connect with the entrepreneurs and tell them, we're going to build unicorns, guys. We want to build a 1 billion euro company. The other day, I had a meeting with 300 entrepreneurs and I ask them to raise their hands, those who want to create a 1 billion euro company. Out of 300 entrepreneurs, we had 15 who raised their hands. So we took the names and we will finance them. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's, the nature, that's the nature of the ambition okay, we want. Okay, who wants to build a $1 billion company? <laughs> raise hands. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like you've got Go a lot of takers. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope, uh, I hope you've got enough money uh, to, to finance everyone in the room. That, I think that's very true. I think that that's changing though. Like we really see a big difference between now and four years ago. What, what, at the um, startups we see at Isai, it's really people know really. That means they all think global, not not only. I mean, we see almost no one you know looking only at the French market. And I, I, I agree with you that they usually don't don't voice out you know the ways that they want to be a unicorn, but probably because they want to be one, but they don't think you know they should say it because it looks a bit strange. So 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 I, I get your point. And, and actually, when I, you know, I, actually, um, when I talk about my new project, I say I want to change the world. And when I say that to Americans, I say, well, yeah, obviously, you, you know, starting a company. And when you say that to French, I'm like, what? <laughs> so that's, that's a difference, yeah. What, what is your new, uh, new company going to be, by so the way? I don't know. So I'm, I'm actually uh, setting a, tip, a, a team to uh, find, the, find the idea. So, um, how, how big a team? 15. 15 people. Yeah. Just A to Z through all the ideas of possible startups. Yeah, we look at we look. At, well, we might not do an internet business. We look at verticals and technologies and, and cross that and look at you know untapped opportunities. I, I think I go against the um, usual idea that you know to find an idea you have to be lucky in your uh, you know you take a shower and oh you know I'm going to do that. I, I think in the reality um, you know finding a good idea is difficult and you might want to you know work hard on it and 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 you know go deep into uh, knowledge of some, some businesses, some, uh, some verticals to get new ideas. I think that's uh, also because there are so many entrepreneurs now in the world that if you don't just rely on, you know, luck um, to finding a new idea, you know, I've been lucky once, actually even more than once, I've started a few companies already, you know, why would I be lucky again? So uh, I want to be more specific now. Uh, so one of the things, I mean, so a couple of people have raised the idea that Silicon Valley has a, has a diversity problem. It's a lot of the same types of people making companies. Uh, in, it's something actually somewhat similar you hear about the French ecosystem, that, the, that, uh, that it's very French, that the, a lot of the startups that are, come here are from French founders. And you know, how do, do you think that that's actually an issue? Does that matter? And if so, how, do, how, do we, how, does, that, how does the ecosystem address that? Yes, I think that it is a key point to have a, a very uh, internationalized uh, ecosystem and obviously we, we still need to, um, to make efforts to internationalize uh, our, our ecosystem. But still, um, I mean with this new generation of uh, French entrepreneurs, uh, you have to keep in mind that they are very um, uh, international, they speak English, uh, they, they, they go to the international very early in their, in their development. Here in France, there are um, uh, more and more uh, tech conference, conferences in English and so on. And here, here we are. Um, but, uh, but yes, we still need to, to attract uh, international entrepreneurs and inter international uh, investors. Um, regarding uh, international entrepreneurs, uh, we are about to launch uh, a program to attract them uh, here uh, in France with, you know, like a we welcome, welcoming package 
uh, with uh, a visa entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur visa with uh, a grant, uh, 30,000 euros, uh, with uh, free offices, uh, and, and so on. And uh, another key point is also that uh, we, we think that to, to be more attractive outside, we, we need to be uh, more, uh, we need to be stronger from within, uh, inside. And that's why uh, we, um, uh, at La French Tech, uh, we work on uh, building a very strong community uh, here in France and also uh, abroad. Uh, because I think that it is very important that we uh, also celebrate um, French entrepreneurs who who left, not just left France to you know to, to escape, but just to to grow their their businesses. And we should uh, celebrate them because from a very short term perspective, uh, it may not feel ideal because you know you think okay many of those will flip uh, and and then. Um, the, m many of those become rich and they won't pay taxes in France. But actually, from a long-term perspective, um, I mean, th this will uh, bring really huge benefits because all these uh, entrepreneurs, uh, if we can keep the connections uh, with them, they will come back to France and they will come back uh, with uh, a great entrepreneurial expertise, with uh, international connections, uh, with, with uh, financial means to, you know, to, to be seed investors. So uh, our goal is really to, you know, to, to build this uh, uh, globally distributed ecosystem here in France, very strong community, and also abroad. That's the, the, the point. So, I mean, attracting people from, from abroad means, you know, uh, ease of, of, of creating your startup here. Also, you know, there's questions about how do you compensate uh, talented employees? Um, you know, you, we hear different, different things. I mean, uh, Macron is saying that, you know, it's actually very easy to, to create a startup in France. And then you hear entrepreneurs also saying that, um, you know, actually at, at a certain level, a lot of the, the laws are complicated. Maybe you can get rid of people, but really all you, you need to hire very high powered lawyers to handle these things. I mean, how complicated is it? Talk about complexity. Uh, I think that's bullshit. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, really, I've, I've been hearing that for 15 years. Yeah. That, that's full bullshit. It's very easy to start, a, to start a company in France. And I tell you one thing, it's much easier than in the US. Yeah. Uh, and I know that because I know many French uh, friends who went to New York to start or Silicon Valley to start their business. And they told me it's, it's crazy. It's so complicated. Um, it's complicated uh, just because you have to do many paper and everything. Plus the lawyers uh, cost a hell, a hell of a price. So, so it's uh, very expensive. Um, getting rid of people in the US is very difficult. So stop saying it's easy. I mean, I mean, an um, investor in the company, we had to get rid of someone. We had to pay him. He was there for like two months. He took money from the company, but we had to, to give him six months free sal I mean, salary because otherwise we were afraid he would try to uh, sue us. And because it's so expensive to have the lawyers, we prefer to give him the six months. But we had the proof he was stealing money from us. It's crazy. In France, he's, he's out the next day and uh, he can attack us, but if he, if he took money, he won't win. So I think that's really, um, I mean, we should stop saying that. I think it's an idea that someone said 15 years ago and everybody thought it was smart and repeated it again and again without thinking about it. That's just, just not true, really. Uh, ju and all the people who vehicle this idea are people who never started companies. And, and that's one good test to do. Think about the next person who tells you that, never started a company. It's always people who either, actually no, some people started company and failed, so they take that an excuse. Or they didn't start, and they take that exactly. You say, you know, I'm an employee, and I'm a bit bored, but I don't start a company because it's too difficult. You know, too much paper. That's that's crazy. Thank you. And and, and what about? I mean, just to just to push this this old bullshit idea. Uh, <laughs> what about when a company gets bigger? I mean, that's another thing people talk about. Is that you know you cross the threshold of 50 people, and suddenly a whole bunch of regulations start uh, to apply. Okay, uh, when you cross the 50 people, you have something called um, comité d'entreprise. So once a month, you have to have at least like 15 minutes talk with a, a few guys. If you're not stupid, you, before the elections, you get to your best employee, say, do you want to be to the comité d'entreprise? I'm so sorry, it's very boring, but please apply. They apply, so they spend 10 minutes uh, every other month, 
and they talk about color of the toilet paper and and uh, <laughs> and I mean, really it's 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 really bullshit again. That, that all these rules they come from um, a, a time when we had industries in France industries for good or bad sake we have no more industries you know so so um, and and, well, and uh, obviously it's a bad thing but internet we have young employees uh, they, they they can be they can, can get a new job in one day so when you fire them they very rarely go to um, to the court because they already have a job very easily um, and they will you know not make problem with committee on entreprise and everything because they just don't care. They, they just want to. They just love their work. So if you're building, a, you know, if you're buying a distressed asset um, with a 60 years old uh, average people uh, in the country, um, uh, you know, working around a coal mine, you know, that's an issue. But uh, if you're starting an internet business, th that's that's no problem at all. And even when you fire people. Um, Okay, I've, I've run, um, you know, totally about uh, 1,000 people. I've never been in court once. So maybe I'm a magician. I don't know, but uh, I don't think I am. So I think you, if you treat the people right, okay, sometimes you have crazy people, but if you treat the people right, um, that, that's all fine. Really, I think it's, it's, it's no problem. One real thing, though, is in Silicon Valley, average salary for a, a developer, $120,000, okay? Average salary for a developer in France, 40,000 euros. And I can tell you, the developers you get here are much, much better than the one you get in Silicon Valley. That's, you know, that's, there is no comparison. Um, just because the one you get in the Silicon Valley, they are the ones that didn't get in Google. Uh, so so you, you will get the leftovers, that's true. So, so, so really, I think it's, um, it's very good to, 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 uh, to start businesses here, frankly. But don't, don't spread the word, we want to keep the good injuries for us, so. Did you, I, I couldn't tell if you wanted to add to that, uh, Marie, or not. Well, okay, I mean, if you don't have anything to add, I, we can go to some of the questions from the audience. There's, there's one question, um, uh, you know, I, I, I like this. The top question is a combative one. How, how can uh, the French tech ecosystem uh, show itself to be more attractive than uh, the UK or Germany. Uh, I don't know if people from the earlier panels are here. Uh, you know, if, if we can get like a kind of cage battle on afterwards, that would be great. Th that's an easy one. We just need to build great company. It's going to show out. Okay, but that's <laughs> it's easier said than done, right? <laughs> right, but we, we started. I mean, we started. If I look now, after the Criteo IPO, after the blah blah cars, fundraise, etc., all the US venture capitalists are now coming and looking at companies here, and they were not doing that before. Mm. So you, you have the these signals. The funding levels in the UK are much higher. I mean, if, the, the VC you know, funding in the UK is, is I mean, the, the amounts are higher. There's more companies. Sure, sure. But it, it will come. I mean, uh, they have more mature companies as well. And there's also something in the UK is that they have the pan-European funds that we do not have in, in France that are London-based and not Paris-based. And there's also something happening, which is in the US, you have this amazing amount of capital now. It's huge, like the difference in the fundraise and the venture capital funds uh, between 2014 and 2013 is huge. So there's so much money. Uh, and then there's this uh, limited number of companies that are growing up. And in Europe, we have less capital, but a, a great amount of companies that are building up. And so I think naturally, they will come to Europe because we have great companies, the valuations are lower still, um, and so, and the scale, and they have a lot to bring to the companies just to open up the US market and all that. So it's a question, it's a matter of time, but it is happening and it will happen. Just before I leave, because I have to leave, I'm sorry. But, but uh, uh, what we try to do as BPI France is many things. First of all, we go abroad and interact a lot with the foreign VC funds, be it in Helsinki, Stockholm, New York, uh, San Francisco, London, and so forth. And we explain just what Pierre said. I mean, we, we try to kill all those uh, bloody prejudices, which are just so stupid, because at the end of the day, you know, the money coming from those countries not flowing to France is a missed opportunity. There's a lot happening here. There's good business to do here. The French venture capital profession is profitable. It's very profitable. It was not the case 20 years ago. It was not mature. Now it is. And all this is evidenced by facts which are published. So 
you know, evidencing the reality of first the power, the depth of the French profession, the returns, and so forth, is, is absolutely fundamental. Second objective, we would like the notably American funds, the big growth funds typically, which were present in Paris in the years 2000, to come back. They left after the explosion of the bubble. They never came back. They only came back to London. They never came back to Stockholm. They never really came back to Berlin, which didn't exist at that time. They were really present at that time in, in Paris. We want them to come back. And for that, we are ready to invest our equity in those funds in the US, provided they allocate part of the fund to France to finance French companies with at least one person in Paris. Are you, are you in talks with... Uh, we with already did two operations with uh, Boston-based biotech funds. And we want to do that with two or three tech funds from, from the Valley. And we're in discussions currently. Yeah, exactly. Can, can you say which firms? No. <laughs> of course not. I mean, I'll tell you when it will be done. And before I leave, I have a good news for the people. Contrary to what Pierre said, we still have an industry. No, really, I mean, uh, I, I, I was one of those because I was working at Capgemini across the world and I thought that, yes, we didn't have an industry anymore. Cruising the country, we have an industry, which is good news. That's very good news. Thank you, Nicolas. Well, thank you very much, uh, Nicolas. We're, we, we have just a, a few minutes left. Um, we'll see if there are uh, other questions from the room. Um, well, there's no microphone, so it's hard for you. Uh, but um, <laughs> this is. Uh, I guess you broke the microphone. We're just breaking all the uh, all the rules. <laughs> okay. Well, let me let, 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 let me let me ask a quick question while we work out our technical difficulties. Is there a in 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 France? Is there a kind of core competency for um, you know a particular area that in which French startups excel. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm the only person who can talk right now. So, uh, yeah, we we destroyed all the microphones. Um, all right. Well, I can. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure. I can't really hand you the one that's around my head. So, uh, with with uh, with with two minutes left, I guess uh, this is a technical reason to say thank you very much to the panel. Uh, sorry that we broke. Uh, broke the equipment, Le Web. Thank you for having us here. And uh, please give a round of applause to our panelists. <laughs>